Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this video I'm going to show you how I handle text fields for iOS and iPadOS in SwiftUI when I want to restrict the entry to either an integer or decimal values. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. There are some real issues with using text fields in SwiftUI when you want to limit the entry to either an integer or a decimal value. As we work through this project, I'll show you what those issues are and how I overcome them with a toolbar button, a view modifier, and a UI kit trick. I'm pretty sure that if you stick around to the end of this short video, you'll learn something new that you can use in your own projects. I've created a project for this video and you can download it from the link in the description. I recommend that you work along with me, as when complete, you'll have a generic view modifier that you can use in your own project, and you'll have a useful UI kit modifier as well. I've created a content view that currently has two text fields, where I'm asking to enter an integer in the first one, and a decimal value in the second. Let's run this on the simulator on an iPhone first, to see what our problems are, and then start working on fixing them. When you tap into a field, make sure the keyboard appears, so I recommend that you go to the I.O. keyboard menu and uncheck the Connect Hardware Keyboard option so that the keyboard will always appear. Now when you tap into a field, we can enter any text value into these fields. There's a problem right away then with our keyboard. There are just too many keys. Well, this is easy to solve on an iPhone. We can specify a different keyboard type. So let's return to Content View. And for the first field, we can specify that we want a keyboard type that is a number pad. For the second one, we can specify a decimal pad. So let's test again. Initially, this looks pretty good, but there are two big problems. The first is that there is no way to dismiss the keyboard. So let's work on fixing that issue first. In order to dismiss the keyboard, we'll need to introduce a toolbar button that will dismiss it. The way that we do that is to introduce an optional focus state property that gets set each time we enter a field, and then a button on the toolbar for the keyboard that will set it to nil and thus dismiss the keyboard. So I'm going to introduce an enum for this view that is called focused state, and it's going to have two cases, int and des, to represent our two different numeric types. Next, I can create a new property using the focus state property wrapper, and I'll call it focused field, which will be optional and a focus field type. So that'll be nil to begin with, so no focus. When someone taps into one of these fields, we can set the focus modifier that will bind our focus field to the corresponding enum case. So in the first case, when it's equal to int, and the second case, when it's equal to des. With that in place now, then we can create a toolbar Inside there, we'll create two toolbar items, each with a placement of keyboard. For the first, we'll create a spacer so that it pushes our next view to the right. And then for the second toolbar item, I'm going to create a button. And the action for that button will simply be to set the focus field to nil. And for the label, We'll use an image using the system name keyboard.chevron.compact.down. So let's test this now. After I enter a number in the first field, I can tap the button to dismiss the keyboard. Great. I can do the same with the second decimal field. Well, this is looking pretty good, but if I enter the second field again, I can continue to add another decimal. 
this is not good. And this is the second issue that I came across. In fact, let me switch to an iPad simulator now to show you how this issue gets compounded even more. Again, let's make sure our keyboard gets presented. And as you see here, there are a lot more options on this keyboard, and there is no difference between a numeric and a decimal keypad. I can enter any one of these keys into the field, either field. So this isn't good at all. We'll need to be able to limit what gets entered. In order to solve this issue with the entry of incorrect keys, I'm going to create a custom view modifier. I have an entire video on custom view modifiers in SwiftUI, and if you're interested in diving deeper into this, I'll leave a link in the description. So first, let's create a file called Number Only View Modifier. And then change the import to SwiftUI. Create a struct of the same name, and make sure it conforms to the View Modifier protocol. Conformance to a view modifier protocol requires that we have a function that's called body that will receive the content and return some view. And then we can use that content and apply some possible modifications, which is what we're going to do. Well, we'll need to know what's being entered and whether or not we need to restrict it to numbers or numbers plus the decimal point. So I'm going to create two properties. One is a binding to our text, which is being entered. And then the other would simply be a Boolean property representing whether or not we want to include a decimal on the keypad. We can specify our decimal type right here in our content based on that include decimal Boolean. So we'll be able to remove that from our content view shortly. So if include decimal is true, we can use the nil coalescer to choose a decimal pad, else a number pad. For the next part of the verification, I'm going to use combine. And it's a very simple little application, so we'll need to import combine first. And with combine, we can create an onReceive modifier that receives a publisher, which is the text that's being entered into the field. And then we can have it perform some kind of action on that content to filter out unwanted keys. We can use a just publisher that will produce an output just once each time a new value is entered into the text field. And this will then produce that new value that we can check. So let's first create a string called numbers that are all of the digits from 0 through 9. An issue that you may not consider, however, is that different countries use a different separator for decimals. Here in North America, we use a period, but in many countries, that's a comma. Well, we can determine that by checking the device's locale. So let's create a constant called decimal separator, which is a string, and assign it the value of the locale.current.decimal separator. Well, this is optional. So, if for some reason it doesn't exist, we can use a period. So then, if include decimal is true, we can append the decimal separator to the number string. Now, we only ever want to allow a single decimal in any input. So we can do this by seeing how many components there would be if we separated our new value by that decimal separator. So we'll need to count those components. Then if we subtract 1, it'll be 0 if there are no decimals, and 1 if there is one. So if we entered another decimal, we'd be greater than 1. We'll need to ignore that last decimal entered. So we'll create a temporary filtered string using that new value, and then set our text for our field to the string value of that filtered string by dropping the last entry, which would be that decimal character. 
Else, regardless now, we can filter our new string to ensure that the numbers with or without the decimal separator string contain this new value. Then if our filter string is not equal to the new value, we can set the text to filtered. Then to make this view modifier more swifty, we can create an extension to view. I'm going to create a function called numbers only with a text parameter that will be a binding to a string and also include a Boolean property called include decimal that will be defaulted to false. And it's going to return some view. Now this is an extension on view, so we can simply apply the modifier to self calling the numbers only view modifier, passing in our text view for text, and then include decimal for include decimal. Now let me fix this typo I had for this include decimal. If I return to content view now, I can remove the keypad modifier and replace it with my new view modifier. For the first one, we'll accept the default include decimal, which is false. So all we'll need to do is specify is numbers only and pass in the int number string as a binding. For the second one, however, we'll need that Boolean property. So we'll bind it to the des number string and then set include decimal to true. So let me test once more. The integer field is still working well as expected. Now, in the decimal field, I can no longer enter more than one decimal. So I need to test this out on the iPad now where there are four more keys besides that decimal to see if that filter still really works. So I'm going to switch over and run this now on an iPad. And when I tap into the field, we see all those other characters. But if I try to tap one of them, they're all restricted, and I'm unable to enter any of those extra characters in either of those two fields. Well, there's one more thing that I want to do before I finish this video. Let me run it one more time on the iPhone simulator. When I enter a lot of digits in a field and want to clear that field, I have to backspace over every one of them to clear it. Wouldn't it be nice if we could have a clear button displayed on that field? Well, it turns out there is a very simple solution. The text field in SwiftUI is really a wrapper on a UI text field. And UI text field has a clear button mode property that you can set to display while editing. All we have to do is create an onAppear modifier for our view. Inside that view, we specify the UI text field dot appearance dot clear button mode is equal to the case while editing. Let's see what happens now in the simulator. After launch, we see that these text fields currently do not have a clear button because they're both empty. However, as soon as I start entering numbers, it appears. And a simple tap on that button clears the field. I think that's pretty cool. Well, I hope you found this video useful and you'll be able to use this code in some of your projects in the future. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. And be sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to get notifications. That'll encourage me to create more videos like this. Thanks for watching.